Hi, Assalamualaikum. Today we are going to start Chapter 7, Ionic Equilibria by learning Lesson 36, Acids and Bases. We should be able to define acid and base according to Arrhenius, Brown's third Lowry and Lewis theories. Then, we should identify conjugate acids and conjugate base according to Brown's third Lowry theory. When we go into the kitchen and we eat oranges, we taste it sour because it has ascorbic acid. And when we eat, um, what do you call that? Uh, acha, menta, uh, gelata. That one has a lot of acetic acid vinegar. Can you feel the sour taste of it? In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to eat from the good things which we have provided for you and be grateful to Allah if it is Him that you worship. Every little things that we encountered every day has their own diverse pH levels. Foods, for example, grains, dairy products, meats, seeds, legumes and nuts tend to have high acidic levels, whereas some vegetables has low acidic levels. So, what are acid and bases? Watching this slide makes us hungry. Asparagus, broccoli, cabbage, carrot, cauliflower and celery were all high in alkaline level. Proteins, good quality proteins are also high in alkaline. For example, eggs, chicken breast, yogurt and almonds. They are also fruits that are uh, having high alkaline levels including apples, bananas, grapefruit, oranges, pineapples, raisins, and dates. A little bit about history. An Irish writer and chemist, Robert Ball, labelled substances as either acids and bases according to the following characteristics. Acids taste sour, corrosive to metals, change litmus red and become less acidic when mixed with bases. Uh, whereas bases feel slippery, change litmus blue, and become less basic when mixed with acid. Let's look at their pH levels. Foods that are strong acid are white bread, alcoholic beverage, colas, and sugar. But foods with mild acids which is uh, meat, legumes, nuts and dairy. What about good foods? Good foods are alkaline. So those would be fruits, vegetables, avocados, almonds, asparagus, cheyenne pepper, melons and kelp. Let's define acid and bases. There are three definitions of acid and bases according to Arrhenius, Brownstead, Lowry, and Lewis. Let's look at the first definition according to Arrhenius. In the year of 1884, he said that an acid is a substance that contains hydrogen and releases hydrogen ion, while bases is a substance that produces hydroxide ions in water. Let's look at example 7.1 and the definition of arine acid is clear on HCl where with water it will produce H3O plus, the hydroxonium ion and it dissociates completely to produce H plus. For bases, NH3 with H2O is going to produce OH- and it dissociates completely to produce OH- also. 
Let's look at the reaction between ammonia and HCl. Can we determine the acid or base in this equation by using Arrhenius definition? No. Why? This definition cannot explain the basicity of compounds that do not have OH minus group. Can you see any OH minus in the products? The products only has NH4 plus and Cl minus. So which one is basic? Therefore, Arrhenius definition is limited. We need a new definition to accommodate this reaction. The second definition for acid belongs to Brownstead Lorry. In 1923, he said that an acid is any substance that donates a proton to another substance. Or we can say an acid is a proton donor. While a base is any substance that can accept a proton from another substance, or we can say base is a proton acceptor. For Brownstead and Lowry definition, it is not defined using water, and when writing the reaction, both accepting and donation should be evident. Let's look at example 7.2a, where we can see that NH3 Ammonia is reacting with HCl and according to the brownstead lorry definition, what is the acid in the above equation? Acid is proton donor, remember? So, it is HCl. It is evident. And according to the brownstead lorry definition also, what is the base in the above equation? Base is a species that accepts the proton or the H+. Plus. So, it is NH3. This is also evident. Okay, let's do example 7.2b. This is the reaction. Let's label the acid and base. Who donated the proton? HCl. This is very clear. Is it an acid or base? According to brownstead lorry definition, HCl is an acid. Now, who accepted the proton? H2O. Is it an acid or base? Yes, it is a base. Let's do example 7.2c. This is the reaction. Did NH3 donate or accept electron? NH3 accept the electron because it becomes NH4 plus afterwards. Is it an acid or base? It's a base. And then what is water? Water is an acid because it donates a proton. What is the definition of conjugate acid base pair? We need to know what is conjugate acid. It's an acid that is produced when a base accepts a proton. What is conjugate base then? It's a base that is produced when an acid donates its proton. Basically, it's the products of the reaction between an acid and a base. An acid will produce conjugate base, whereas a base will produce a conjugate acid. The stronger the acid or base, the weaker the conjugate is. Whereas, the weaker the acid or base, the stronger the conjugate is. Let's do example 7.3 when we are doing the reaction between ethanoic acid and water. Acid, the ethanoic acid, CH3COOH donates proton and it will become CH3COO minus the base conjugate. Whereas water H2O is the base because it accepts the proton and it becomes H3O plus the acid conjugate. The next example is ammonia 
ammonia as sap proton, it's a base, it will produce acid conjugate at H4+. H2O is the species who donates the proton, so it's an acid. It's going to become OH-, which is a base conjugate. Next question, carbonate ion is a base because it accepts proton from H2O, producing H3O, HCO3- acid conjugate. Water is an acid. It donates proton to carbonate ion to produce base conjugate OH-. D. HF is an acid. It donates H to NH3 and produce base conjugate F-. NH3 is a base because it accepts proton from acid and it becomes acid conjugate NH4+. The third definition is a Lewis. In 1923, Gilbert Lewis states that a Lewis acid is a substance that can accept a pair of electrons to form a covalent bond. And a Lewis base is a substance that can donate a pair of electrons to form a covalent bond. Example 7.4 is familiar because we've done this when we are learning about dative covalent bonding. Yes, NH3 ammonia is donating a pair of electrons to form covalent bond with H+. So ammonia is the Lewis base and H+, is the Lewis acid. Second example, between BH3 and ammonia. Again, ammonia is the base because it donates two of its electrons to become a covalent bonding pass with the Lewis acid BH3. Without looking at the Lewis structure, how are we going to predict whether a species is a base or an acid according to Lewis definition? We need to find the lone pairs of electron. For methanamine in example 3 here, it has a lone pair at nitrogen. So nitrogen is the Lewis base in methanamine. It will donate two electron to H plus in HCl. So HCl is the Lewis acid. For question number 4, Cl2 is the Lewis base it will donate one lone pair to the Lewis acid FeCl3, making the base conjugate FeCl4 minus. A bit of an important point here. An acid can have a positive and negative or neutral charge, for example, H3O+, sulfuric acid, and HCO3-. But a base can only have a negative charge or neutral, for example, OH-, CN-, or NH3. Basically, a base cannot have a positive charge. Thank you very much for watching, and we have done what we are supposed to do Defining acid and base according to Arrhenius, Brownstead Lorry, and Lewis theories, and also we identify the conjugate acids and the conjugate bases.